Okay, so question 118 of leak code Pascal's triangle. So what this question is asking for is if it provides an integer called num rows, we need to provide them back with an array of an arrays containing Pascal's triangle integers. So these here are arrays. So if we visualize it like this, it will become a lot easier to comprehend. So let's just discuss what Pascal's triangle is. So Pascal's triangle is a triangle that upon reaching row three, it uses logic from the previous array in order to computate the values within it. So here two is comprised of one and one from the previous array. Here three is comprised of one and two from the previous array. Here is comprised from two and one and so on and so forth. So we need to write out some kind of algorithm that will solve this. Now there are two solutions. As you can see, each integer here is comprised from previous summations and that just signals dynamic programming or there is a non-dynamic programming way where you use loops and a two-pointer technique and that is what we'll be going through today. So if we jump into the code, it will be a lot easier when you can see it written out. So here we are in the code. So the first thing that we need to do is we need to be able to store the kind of results into some kind of array. So we're going to create an array called res. And if we look at Pascal's triangle, the first row and the second row are not using any kind of logic at all to come up with values. So we can just say if num rows is greater than or equal to one res.push one, right? If num rows is greater than or equal to two res.push one one okay simple as that and before i forget we can return res right so in here is where we write the logic that is going to work out the rest of pascal triangles tree so we know for a fact that we've carried out the first two iterations or the first two arrays so we can say i is equal to two because we've carried out the first two values. i is less than nums, num rows. So we're gonna be looping through the rows. And what we're going to do is we're gonna say, the first value is equal to one. The last value is equal to one. Because we know within Pascal's triangle, every single array in Pascal's triangle starts with a one and it ends with a one. So we can say that right here. And then what we can do is we can loop through the rest. So we need to check the previous values. And the way we do that is we get the previous array. So we say that prev array equal res i minus one. Okay, so we've got the previous array here. Now what we can do is we can check if it is equal to two, then all we need to do is push in the left value or the first value with first plus last and then the last value. So if prevarray.length is equal to two, we can push into the results array first, first plus last and last. So that's going to give us one, two, one, right? Else. What we're going to have to do otherwise is we're going to have to loop through the array and we're going to have to take the first two values and then the second two values, right? And we're going to have to do that consecutively throughout each array. And the way we can do this without utilizing too much time is with a left and right pointer. So we can say that left equals zero, that right equal one. And we need to create some kind of array to store those new values in. Now with the left and right pointer, we'll use a while loop. So while right is less than previous array dot length. So for example, in this one, right, if we're deciding one, three, three, one, we need to make sure that the right value doesn't go past the previous array dot length, otherwise we'll get undefined and that'll throw an error in our results. So we do not want that. So we say right is less than 
prevr.length. So add.push prevr left plus prevr right. And now what we need to do is we need to increment left and right. So, and we do that by just incrementing the two. And then finally, what we can do is we can push into results the first value, which is always going to be one. We can spread out add, and then we can add the last value. Now the spread operator here, what this is doing is here we've created the add array. So this is an array. The spread operator here is just copying it and then it is spreading it or it is removing the array box around it. So then this will only be one array. It won't be an array within arrays. And that is exactly what we want. That is what we're pushing into results. And then finally we can return res. Well, let's check just to see if that's worked. Okay, that's been accepted. Submit it. So in terms of time complexity, so we have one for loop here, and then we have the while loop, which runs through each array. So if we look back into here, we're looking through each array in Pascal's triangle. And within that, we are looking at individual values within that array over and over again. So time complexity is going to be O n squared and space complexity is going to be O of n, where n is the add array.